offers how to uh, improve that CDI applications. Yeah, you read. Please welcome these pioneer speakers. Please give big hand. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shan Li, and I usually go by Linda. So if it's more comfortable to call me Linda. Um, so uh, I'm in the right now currently working as an associate uh, professor at National Kaohsiung University of Science Technology at the Department of Safety, Health and Environmental Engineering. Um, so um, if you you probably are already aware that as I actually started my study as an engineer, but after several years of getting my hands dirty and then a couple you know, several uh, countless nights of staying late in the lab, so I just decided you know I should quit of doing you know some engineer work. I should go with the environmental management and planning. So that's why uh, the talk that I'm gonna cover today is to touch some basis uh, on our understanding on uh, how the uh, MCDI can be considered as a environmental friendly solution for water management. Okay, wait. Hmm? Hmm? Okay, so the talk will be covered with three primary uh, outcomes from our group, uh, which including the environmental performance of MCDI through long-term advancement from prototype to pilot scale. And the second part will be the technical and uh, economic performance of CDI for industrial water supply and the wastewater recombination. And the third part will be uh, looking at the overall performance for integrating the technologies for pilot scales uh, system, I mean, for energy efficient wastewater, treat, uh, wastewater reclamation system. Okay, so to start with, uh, of course, water is the core of sustainability and necessarily our efforts towards both economic and the environmental benefits. So we've seen a lot of um, people, I mean, globally in, um, in different regions, different countries have implemented uh, integrated water resource management. Okay, so as you can see that the, all the blues, uh, the regions with the blue uh, colors that actually indicate that people are having a really high level of investment in terms of the um, integrated water resource management implementation. So as you can see, these are all the regions that are where all the delegates coming from. That's why we are gathering here today. Okay, so this actually leads to our work to uh, moving into the advancement of low energy demand water treatment technology in order to ensure that the sustainability in the water sector. So um, normally, like generally speaking, if we can get the water, just getting the fresh, fresh water from uh, like a river or reservoir get or ground water, then of course that would be our first priority because it actually requires less uh, energy for treating those waters. But in my point of view, in the shortage, uh, in the water shortage challenge that we are facing now or today, that wastewater reclamation for sure will be a, a better alternative, alternative compared to desalination of seawater, because actually the desalination of seawater actually comes from the more energy compared to wastewater reclamation. So with that, I believe that most of you all agree that MCDI, the membrane capacity of the energy will be regarded as a emerging technology for water treatment. So um, the MCDI, of course, is actually an, an improved configuration of CDI that integrates of the concept of uh, ion exchange and the CDI module. And it is really uh, advantageous for ion removal with a relative high charge efficiency, which I, I'm not going into the detail of that. However, the environmental performance of emerging water treatment technology, including MCDI, CDI, or any types of the CDI has been rarely studied. Uh, uh, one of the keynote speakers just Can mentioned earlier this morning that we definitely need the okay, LCA that person. Oh, I'm the radical, LCA person right uh, here. Okay, so there's a need for sure for life cycle thinking to understand all the environmental impacts or environmental performance, performance of all the systems that we study, especially to support the future improvement of its design. So I'm gonna show you some of the case that we have found. Okay, so well, life cycle assessment or let's say life cycle thinking so for sure is the one way that to understand for us to understand the uh, environmental performance of the CDI. So it actually complies, um, it's actually a standardized um, procedure 
uh, a method that will uh, help us to understand and evaluate the inputs, 40%. outputs, and the potential environmental impact impacts right. for products through and its, its a whole life cycle. Good morning, everyone. Actually, uh, I can give a lecture for like a three days, but I'm gonna give you just short picture like this. Okay, so these um, that's an environmental um, planner that we do aim to study all the uh, footprints, uh, fundamental footprints, all the footprints through its life cycle, not just as a carbon footprint. So later on, when you see the result, you will not only see the carbon footprint, you will see a result from other uh, environmental issue that we concern. Okay, so uh, we actually started the environmental impact assessment starting back to 1, 2016, that we started from a really tiny um, prototype of the CDI. And then we, uh, through the only advancement of um, the, uh, the CDI, the MC, is from CDI to MCDI from our group, we actually found out that the electric, uh, electricity consum uh, consumption had relatively lower overall impacts compared to the material and the chemical usage, which I'm going to show you later. Um, so one thing actually catch us attention is that from the original CDI, or let's say the protocol, prototype CDI, um, the use of the DMAC in uh, the preparation of the electrodes um, has a, a great potential, I would say risk, that would cause the uh, infertility problem. So that would actually cause, uh, catch us attention that we have to deal with this issue. And how can we uh, re uh, reduce the impacts that uh, also associate with the use of DMAC. So what we uh, starting to do is that we try to um, deliver dif uh, different um, types, I mean, try to uh, improve the design of the CDI from the basic ones, oh, sorry, from the best ones that using the uh, aluminum plate to the improved ones compass, that replace the uh, aluminum plate to, to plastic high purity plate. Of the okay. And the, during that time, that we uh, and then we also uh, have a scaled up MCDI that uh, is being replaced with the aluminum right. to the plastic and plate. A and then for the chemical, since we are aware that the DMAC has the, the risk of infertility, so we actually replace the DMAC with the NMP. Okay, and with the improved uh, design of the MCDI, we actually decrease the amount of the MMP as well. But at the same time, since the MCDI, um, uh, with the addition of the uh, ion uh, exchange membrane, they actually um, have additional use of the, um, the uh, PVDF actually uh, for the use of the uh, ion exchange membrane. Okay, and with these three designs, we also have uh, three different productivity in terms of uh, the, the water production. Okay, um, so this is actually an overview of our result. Um, so we can uh, start looking at the left hand side with the 40%. carbon footprint. So from the beginning of the basic CDI, when we add the membrane and use alternative materials and the chemicals, uh, which involving the replace the aluminum to plastic plate and the, the, uh, the reduced use of the NMP that will actually reduce the carbon footprint of the whole module from about 3.5, 3.7 kilogram uh, carbon dioxide equivalent per cubic meter of the product, uh, product water to about like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 um, kilogram the carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, then if we, sorry, if we look at the overall impacts, which account all of the impacts uh, from the different environmental aspects, then uh, we'll still observe that uh, there's a significant reduction, mainly in the, um, the area of marine ecotoxicity. So this is actually partly due to, uh, of course, the, the uh, the energy consumption, the energy requirement for the CDI is actually significantly reduced. And when we replace um, the uh, the housing, the material, or even the the current collector, the front aluminum to to um, to to platinum, and uh, the reduction of the NMP as a solvent, that we actually uh, see a significant reduction in either um, carbon emissions and the marine ecotoxicity impacts. So, and if we break down their impacts, the overall impacts into different compartments to see the comp contribution of different compartments of the whole the module design, we'll see that the most of the, um, 
the contributions, a, a major share of the contribution actually coming from the NMP, which is being used as a solvent. It's not actually like a major ingredient for our uh, for the electrodes, it's actually just a solvent. It's after you, um, after the fabrication, you, you it actually goes out to the environment. It does not really contribute to the whole ingredient in in charge of in like in terms of like electrochemical reaction or or so. So that's why we uh, we found that it is uh, important for the NMP management or other types of the solvents that being part of the, the fabrication of the electrodes, that there's a need for those process uh, optimization, which is that you know, we should uh, try to minimize the use of these solvents. And if we take a closely look at the different uh, characterization the result for these environmental impacts, then we'll see that for most of the uh, the impact categories, but this one. Okay, for most of the impact categories that actually they follow a similar trend for the uh, carbon dioxide emissions as well as for the total impact results. But we do observe some of the trade-offs, which means that when we change to from the original CDI to MCDI, the addition of the memory actually increased the total impacts uh, in terms of abiotic uh, dial. Uh, abiotic depletion potential, as well as for the ozone layer depletion potential and the terrestrial the ecosystem uh, potential. So which actually these, the addition of other things in order, memory, I memory specifically, that in order to increase the performance of CDI will actually lead to possible trade-offs in terms of the environmental impacts. Okay, so with the confidence that we already understand the uh, environmental friendliness of um, the uh, CDI system, then we move to, uh, we actually propose that use for uh, pra practical applications in the uh, high industrial, high tech industries. Okay, so we study on the technical in, in, in economic performance of the CDI for industrial water supply and wastewater uh, reclamation. So we found that the energy requirements that actually range from 0 0.015 to 0.69 kilowatt hour per cubic meter of the product water, depending on different types of the water quality, in, I mean, in input water quality, source water, with a high, uh, relative high charge efficiency over 70%. And we also uh, able to estimate the levelized cost of water ranged from 0 0.35 to 0 0.53 um, US dollar per cubic meter of the water being produ produced. Okay, so we uh, studied on the, the um, use of the MCDA um, for high tech industries, which uh, you may probably aware that it was a, a main key in industry in Taiwan. So since they are, they have they have faced uh, restrictions on their water use. So well, they they have to figure out how to get their water and how to lay. Um, optimize their water usage. Okay, so we propose that the MCDI can be used either for production of the ultra pure water, as well as for reclaimed their water, uh, the wastewater in their, um, their site. Okay, so for production water, um, ultra pure uh, water, we uh, um, propose that we can get the ultra pure water from soft tap water, as well as for the hard tap water. And for recurrent water, we propose that MCI can be used for cooling water to blow down the treatment, as well as for the wastewater discharge. Okay. So um, since it is actually being tested in Taiwan, so it will be uh, the, uh, the CD actually, the MCI actually uh, being in integrated with the uh, UF module that for in just in case that there will be some like falling or scaling problem. That's that's a typical thing that we do in Taiwan because um, you can't already sense like the humidity and the temperature is kind of like high. So it, the, the, the memory actually will get like a falling or scaling really quickly. Okay, so that's the uh, the result that we have found. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not really, really good at explaining these these graphs, but that we can see like after the ten consecutive uh, uh, flows that tested that we can see um, the conductivity uh, decrease 
significantly and going back when uh, there's at the discharge stage. So we can see there's a high stable and the technical feasible for practical applications, uh, either for the soft water uh, deionization or hot, hot tap water deionization, either for the wastewater treatment. And the energy requirement that we are uh, able to estimate is at a range which I already covered a, a little earlier between the 0 0.14 to 0 0.6 three, or uh, even for until this point, um, 68 kilowatt hour per cubic meter for um, the wastewater discharge, because the, the, the water is actually not clean. There are a lot of uh, ions involved in the uh, wastewater stream. Okay, so for the contribution of labelized cost uh, of water that we will be able to identify that most of the costs um, uh, it's in the range between the 0.35 to 0.53 USD, uh, US, US dollars per cubic meter that being produced. And the cost for electrode replacement actually outweighs the influence of the desalination uh, death. So which means that um, the, the maintenance or the re replacement of the, the, the memory of the or the electrodes actually will um, strongly um, determine like how much we're gonna put into um, the the costs. Okay, so the cost is mostly um, determined by the water productivity. Uh, so as you can see that for the wastewater discharge, because it has relatively lower um, productivity, so that's why we actually end up with a, a relatively higher um, uh, level levelized cost of water. Okay. And the last part I would like to um, introduce will be the overall performance of the integrated pilot scale system. Um, so we uh, we try to, uh, so with the confidence that we know that MCDS is environmental friendly um, technology, and we know that it can be uh, implemented for uh, industrial wastewater treatment, then we want to know that it is possible, if it is possible really at a really great scales to integrate the whole uh, system into a pilot scale that will be able to um, to deal with the, 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 the water shortage issue. So we try to um, uh, we pro propose the system that for um, recognition of those domestic wastewater. So we see that uh, after the whole treatment that the water quality actually falls the requirement for wastewater recognition in Taiwan that with the locally with the which fulfill the conductivity requirements and the um, CO, the other water quality requirements. And um, but similarly to our basic module analysis that the electricity consumption and can, chemical use are also the important uh, hotspot in the system. Okay, so this is how the system uh, looks like. If you have uh, had a chance to step out of the poster section, you, you may see something similar. Actually, got we, we, we work together. So this is how it looks like uh, at the site. So actually uh, integrated the process of the same filtration, the outro filtration, membrane uh, MCDA and a UV unit in order to reduce this uh, the COD. Okay, so it's, it is at a, a production rate of about 10 uh, cubic meter per day. So this is how, oops, sorry. So this is how it looks like for the inflow and outflow uh, in terms of the conductivity. Um, okay, so um, we also did a, a complete uh, life cycle analysis on these uh, system. So we in, try to include only, uh, only units that into the system boundary, including uh, what we have mentioned, the sand filtration unit, the UF unit, MCDI unit, and UV unit. And when we, when we performed the uh, life cycle assessment, we have to include all the materials, chemical use, or consumptions, uh, as well as for the waste being generated or being accounted into the assessment. Okay, so what we have found is that uh, the carbon footprint for the whole system, if, if you can recall that the, for the MCDI module that we uh, finalized uh, in the first um, uh, part, that the, uh, the carbon footprint is at about like 0.7 um, kilogram the carbon uh, carbon dioxide per, uh, equivalent, but now we are at having like the carbon footprint about 2.82 uh, kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, right now. Uh, but it's actually mainly uh, due to the electricity, electricity consumption of the MCD and UF because these are the two 
main um, units that will actually deal with the water treatment process will actually remove most of the ions and the contaminants from the from the stream. That's why it's, uh, it's energy consumption actually a contributed to a lot to the carbon footprint. But these results surprisingly, without surprise that it's actually comparable with the previous study that most of the, um, the wastewater treatment or wastewater reclamation uh, system will uh, have like a, about a point 0.6 to 2.4 uh, kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent for um, per production the one cubic meter of the water. Okay. Uh, Okay, and then uh, we also study on uh, the, the overall impacts, and then we know that the uh, most contributing impacts will still be on the marine the ecotoxicity, which will, can be attributed to the electricity consumption, as well as, as those chemical uses in terms of the NMPs or other chemicals. And the use of membrane also contributed to the impact of the ozone layer depletion. If you can see like the, the carol, yellow right here. It's just, it actually comes from the, the memory that using in the system. Okay, so with that, I would like to conclude uh, what we have found uh, in our uh, research team. Um, so we are sure that there will be some benefits and of course some trade-offs um, between um, the, 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 the development of these technology as well as for the environmental performance. So in order to support the future improvements oh, the for this technology with a favorable performance, I would like to suggest that um, of course, the low energy demand is uh, one of the main advantage of the CDI system. Um, and there's also a possibility to integrate with yeah. the renewable energy sources, uh, such as uh, power um, PV system. I uh, actually had a chance to, to, to look at one of the poster sessions that, that they have a really novel um, like algorithms along, uh, like along the way the, the PV system that can control how uh, the energy gonna reduce, be reduced to, uh, to, 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 to use for the uh, control of the, the, the MCDI system. And we may also need to uh, pay attention to on the chemical use for electrical preparation, like the binders or the solvent, even for the choice of the memory that are being used. So these are the, all of the efforts that we can put into it in order to see, uh, improve the environmental performance of the system. And uh, for the cost effective, I'm not sure, just like the Professor Wei just mentioned, it depends depending on the, the sources of your water, depending on where you are, there are a lot of uh, 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 factors that can affect the, uh, the cost. So yeah, so we'll have to study on it. And for the environmental friendlies, um, our answer is yes. And if you need more study, and if you're interested in the life cycle assessment on the system, then please contact me. So I would like to acknowledge all the groups, my groups and the host groups for all these works. Uh, I have one student, if you can see right here, right here, he's actually my intern from that one. And he actually, he's not like an engineer, but he did the, the map in, in the per previous slide, so I did a map there. Okay, so thank you if you need any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your nice presentation. Is there any question and comment? Uh, good talk, thank you. Thank so you. Uh, I have a question like related to the content on slide like uh, 15, 15 or yeah, 15 or 16. So it seems, seems like, you know, when it comes to a time that you calculate the uh, impact or you know the uh, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent, the values you use is critical, and so I'm guessing that's the certainty or the uncertainty of that kind of value is critical to the entire like you know uh, process because you know on six uh, slide number sixteen you say that uh, based on the how the next strategy is that we should reduce the use of this kind of chemical. So when it comes to this kind of issue, you know how do you deal with it? Yes, can I go back to the 15? Okay, yes. Um, I think what, what you're saying is that the, the numbers, of course, is critical uh, in terms of the methodology that we are being, it's being used. So can I go to slide? I don't know, can I use this one? 
uh, maybe the ones with the whole, maybe this one with the system. Okay, so the the so that's why I'm saying that if I you want me to explain the life cycle assessment, I, I, it's gonna take me three days. Okay, um, so um, the number is actually based on the system boundary that we defined, as well as which method that we are use we used. So. Um, so for every calculation, we'll show like which, uh, which like which what are the factors that are being considered in the system boundary, as well as that what method are being uh, being used. But for carbon footprint or carbon dioxide emissions, I would say either either method would be or like very consistent. I would say because it's actually a, a really matured methodology developed by IPCC, so it's quite. Um, mature, I would say like it's with less uncertainty. Um, but for other impacts, I'm not sure because for some of the uh, the methodology, they may uh, ignore like some impacts from some like metals. Like if you are using like different metals, especially like a trans metal or like the noble, noble metals that they may really have the access of the data that which they may include those impact results in their method. So you may end up with a under, uh, underestimation of the results. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And other questions? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, in fact, I'm just curious about the application of the UV after the MCDI. Okay. Is there any specific reason for this application? Oh yes, for the UV because uh, we after the MCDI module it actually still has really relatively higher uh, concentration in terms of the organic matters, so we try to reduce um, the concentration of organic matter, right? Right, my partners, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, yes, I think that, that's the, the main idea Thank of so the much. UV. Thank you. Yeah, I think UV is mainly for disinfection purposes. That's the main, the main purpose. Yeah. Um, I, I think interesting analysis. You know, I, I think LCA uh, is is great. Um, looking at the uh, the capital cost uh, uh, and issues around making the unit. Um, our experience is that actually the O and M costs are really important. So I think right. building in life cycle analysis of the operations and maintenance uh, are really vital. And we also need to really add in issues like reliability and resilience. They are, you know, the, the clients, the water authorities ask, will it keep working? Will it fail? Right, right, How long right. for? You know, those right. sort of issues are critical. So I think in addition to this sort of analysis, we need those sorts of analysis built in as well. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we do include some assumptions on the how long the electro is gonna last or how how long the system gonna last. But it's it's basically on a theoretical estimation. Right. Thank you. Maybe uh, we have many we... questions, but you just try to online uh, questions. Answer. We are in behind in the schedule, but just one question is possible, I think. Uh, How? Uh, let maybe I can. Well, for some of the questions, it's kind of like technical parts. <laughs> um, but for the investment of the CDI equipment compared to RO, um, I would say that uh, CDI is still in the development stage, so we can we are not sure about like how low that the, the cost can be. Can can go, um, but I'm pretty confident that with the, all the efforts from the group right here, that will will be possible to reduce the overall cost for the CDI. Yeah, but like a, the RO is the lady market. It's on the you know, so it's quite like cheap right now. So yeah, it's really hard hard to compare with it. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you, thank you for thank your you. nice presentation. Please give you a big hand for a nice presentations. We are moving on to the next speaker from. South Korea, he's from the Sion Tech.